Sydney's magnificent Harbour Bridge, one of Australia's most loved and recognisable landmarks. Perhaps less well known is that this iconic structure was fathered by the very same man who built one of Sydney's least known and least loved constructions. John Bradfield's abandoned tunnels lie hidden beneath Sydney's busy CBD, untouched since the beginning of World War II. An enormous amount of Sydney's history lies hidden in these tunnels. The question is, will it to be abandoned like Sydney's forgotten railway? In 1906, they opened the present station, which is a little bit closer to the city, on the other, other side of Devonshire Street to the old station. Um, improved it, but not solved the problem of getting into the city. About the early 1950s, they did start work on a, an eastern suburbs railway, not to Bradfield's plan, uh, and that required a, a platform in Chalmers Street at Central. While they had the gigantic hole open, they built four platforms, two down and two up, two of which were needed for this, the Eastern Suburbs Railway. Uh, but they thought, well, while we're here and we've got a big hole, let's put two spare stations for the next stage, whenever that comes. So they, uh, they were meant for the Southern Railway. They have no use for those platforms. Perhaps they do security exercises or training or something down there, but it's very incidental. There's no use for them. They're dirty and rubbish everywhere and uh, quite derelict. In Bradfield's 1915 plan, he had an eastern suburbs railway that would come in from the east through the city and out into the western suburbs to enable uh, commuters to change from one line to another. At St James he had four platforms, two that we know for the city circle and two for this east-west line uh, so that people would be able to change from one to the other across the platform. Plainly he wasn't going to dig this gigantic hole in Hyde Park and put the uh, city circle stations under there and not build the other two platforms. It obviously had to be all done at the same time. Well, he took the tunnels at either end of the station far enough away to get them up or over or under the city circle tunnels so that there'd be no disturbance at a later stage when work resumed. So he did build them in 1926. Virtually nothing's happened to them since 1926 in terms of railway and there they remain. The eastern suburbs platforms at St James were always provisioned for some future plan, maybe for the next generation, and that generation has never come. They are being used for absolutely nothing. They are there, they are damp, they are dirty, they are partly flooded, they have absolutely no use. Platforms 26 and 27 were built in the 1970s, over 60 years after Central Station's original construction. However, all four of St James's tunnels were put in during the construction of the station in the 1920s. Both platforms and tunnels were built for trains that never came. The plan in 1926 was to get the city circle open as soon as he could. So the, the, the bit that he could afford to finish was Museum and St James. Then he went on to build uh, Town Hall and Wynyard, but then money ran out so he didn't build Circular Quay, didn't build the loop, just two dead-end railways. Uh, and then the, the Depression, the Second World War, so the, the connection between the two stub railways through Circular Quay didn't come till 1956. Like platforms 26 and 27, the St James tunnels have laid dormant since they were built. Other than a short stint as an air raid shelter and command centre during World War II, the only use for the tunnels has been tours and the occasional movie set. The tunnels to the south of St James towards the museum were used as an air raid shelter. Considerable work was done there. Hundreds and thousands of tonnes of concrete was poured in there to barricade them off into discrete rooms so that uh, you know, a bomb exploding in one would at least be limited to that one chamber rather than all the chambers. Uh, extra entrances were cut from the surface in Hyde Park into those uh, air raid shelters. Sydney's least known body of water is named Lake St James by the very few who have seen it. It runs for one kilometre within the tunnels. After St James opened, Bradfield continued working towards Circular Quay and he also continued working on this eastern and western suburbs railway insofar as he was allowed. And the western suburbs tunnels had to cross under the city circle to get into the centre of the city to get back to Town Hall. Uh, that meant there was, was one tunnel on top of another and so 
Bradfield built both. He wouldn't build one tunnel and then work under it later. So there's this isolated piece of the Western Suburbs Tunnel. It's not connected to the tunnels from St James, at least in terms of getting a train there. It's a, a crawl through a passage to get in there. Complete the, Once you get in there, it's a full-size tunnel uh, and it heads downhill and water flows downhill, so seepage through the ground just gets in there and there's nowhere for it to go. There's still great interest in these hidden assets and the question is, what's next for the tunnels? Will a younger generation remain intrigued with the story of the hidden railways? Or will their secrets fade into history? Well, the, these, there's quite an extensive amount of tunnels um, at St James and they're all very interesting, not only for the railway history, uh, there's a lot of construction history and of course there's a lot of the Second World War history, the air raid shelters. It's um, a matter of some fascination. So this society, the Australian Railway Historical Society, began taking tours down there on one weekend a month and we were never short of people who wanted to go and uh, we would all don our gum boots and um, wade through the water and through the dark and the cobwebs and the, the roots of the trees from Hyde Park uh, to both ends right down to the towards the museum and the, the war memorial uh, and right down into Lake St James and wade out as far as the top of our gum boots and um, have a good fun. Well, Sydney Open, um, once a year in November, opens a whole lot of um, public or public buildings that aren't normally... Ex ..for guided inspection, and um, Sydney Trains allows access to St James, to the unused Eastern Suburbs platforms, to the clock tower, and uh, to the mortuary station on those days and uh, they usually ask us, the Railway Historical Society, to be the expert guides for those occasions. But we only go to the air raid shelter end of St James. Producers of films have a, a register of interesting places which they might suit the film that they want to make and obviously a place like a underground railway, a dark chamber with vaulted roof and interesting shapes and spaces is on their list and when it suits the film they um, use St James by agreement with Sydney Trains and um, set themselves up down there. Just a short train ride from here at Central Station we have the Australian Railway Historical Society. Tucked away in the back streets of Redfern this tiny building is crammed full to the roof full of railway records and memorabilia.